Hey everybody, it's Mike Fahey with Kotaku, and I am playing Giga Wrecker. It's a game from Game Freak, the developer you may know as the Pokemon people, but they also make other games as well. This is one of them. They also made that badass elephant game I played a while ago that was pretty good. This game is on early access, just launched yesterday, and we shall play a little bit of it so I can show you what it is. I'm going to start a new game. March 20th, 2032. Those things suddenly appeared. Unidentified killing machines. Where they came from, how they got here. Everyone came up with their own ideas, delusions, and theories. Secret weapons of some country went out of control. Maybe they're drones sent by aliens from outer space. They must be metallic life forms from another dimension. We spelled dimension wrong, but that's okay. It's early access. Artifacts from some ancient civilization. Conspiracy theories were even headlined on TV and in newspapers. Conspiracy theories in TV and newspapers? No. <laughs> but all those lasted only for a few days, as their evasion advanced much faster than we could think. And cities disappeared one after- okay, whatever. This series is- <laughs> my Siri just activated and is trying to look this up now. Thank you. Shut up, Siri. <laughs> Our armies didn't have the chance against their own own technology. Three years have passed since then. Those who are left are barely living in this hell on Earth, hiding inside ruins, crawling around like rats. If they find us, the old and sick will be killed, the young will be made slaves and worked to death. My family and friends, they all died. There's nothing happy about living in this world, but I never thought of dying. Giving in to all this unfairness, admitting our defeat, that's way more horrible than death. So even at the time they caught me, I waited for the chance to escape and tried to run away. I tried, but the next moment, I had a blade stuck through my body. Well, well, what a spectacle. Your left arm is gone from the shoulder and your ribs have punctured your heart. Your life will end in about five minutes, I guess. But I have the ability to save you. I'm Dr. Bloodcoat. So, how about it, Dr. Bloodcoat? Oh, sorry. As I was fading away, I agreed with his offer. This man, Dr. Kozuki Bloodcoat. I became the guinea pig for his studies in exchange for bringing me back to life. Kozuki is a mad scientist. I had no other choice but to rely on him. What I got in trade for my pride was this crooked body, patched up on every side. Armed with this metal arm of the demon, I became a cyborg, half machine, half human. My name is Reika Rikikiji. Kiji Kiji Kiji. I really need to brush up on my Japanese pronunciation. Make sure my mouse isn't on the screen. So here we are, hey. Hello there. Are you listening, girl? What's up? <laughs> Sup? Hey. Just forget it. Well, it looks like your communication functions are working fine. Okay, let's make things clear. What you want from me, and what I want from you, I want you to collect and send me as much experiment data as you can. You want me to get out of this hellhole. Want me to get you... I shouldn't do this. That's right, I want to spend my new life out of here. So listen up. I've got a plan to satisfy both of us. Blah, 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 some stuff. He's a genius. Not only I saved you from death, but also turned you into the strongest cyborg. Who wouldn't call me genius? I call you Dr. Bloodcoat. For three years, day and night, I'd have devoted myself to those robot research. Game Freak. Need some translators. Early access. Hmm. A genius. Sure, I guess. They do say there's a fine line between genius and insanity. Besides, I don't have any other choice. Alright. I'm in. Yes, that's a good girl. So let's get... Okay, just... So here we go, this is what we do here. The jumping animation needs work. This is not how jumping works. Your knees don't bend like that. It's weird, because the momentum when you're jumping stops. I mean, the, the momentum does not carry through, is what I'm saying. But, you know, we'll work with it. Oh. Like, running forward fast like this, I shouldn't be jumping further, but it kind of stops and moves upwards. What's wrong? Ah, see those planks? Just climb down them. I know that. 
I'm not gonna do the voices anymore. Just imagine them. A wall. Am I already at a dead, land, dead end? Of course not. No need to, I'm not gonna do the voices. Let me introduce you to your new powers. Maybe before was a good time for that. Magnificent. I don't think that's the word to describe all this mess you've done to my body. Don't accuse me, girl. You gave me permission. Hmm. It creates an electrowave from your amplified brainwaves and bioelectricity, which excites the nanomachines that exist in the soil and atmosphere. And by adding moment, moment, momentum? Okay. So, if I summarize it all, it means you can just bash through those walls. Screw you, walls! Shiny blue things are flying towards me sometimes. I think F12 on that. There. I want to have the, the screenshot of shiny blue things are flying towards me sometimes. These are nanocrystals. It's the in inert and dormant form of the nanomachines. They're one of the materials which form your new body, so if you collect them, I can use them to upgrade your cyborg abilities. Yes. Okay. The door is locked. Somewhere there is a control device. Let us unlock it. Whoa. Yes, that's it. Yeah, I figured that was it. So it's weird, we have this post-apocalyptic type of world here, where this girl is the lone survivor of her family, and she wants to get out. The mad Dr. Bloodcoat. Save completed. The mad Dr. Bloodcoat gave her cybernetic implants. I must need the blue things flying towards me. Jumping, 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 cyborg princess. Oh, that worked. So yes, yeah, so we've got jumping down. We've got uh, smashing things down. Don't need that last crystal in the cup. Is there like a upgrades skill tree? Can I do anything in there yet? Yes. My vitality has been increased. Ah, look at this, some physics puzzles. So there's a singularity point. You can, uh, Rewind time, basically, if you mess this up. Like, if I did this and messed that up, I could go in here, rewind time. It's basically an undo button. In case I screw up. Which I probably will. What does this say? Caution. There have been reports of tachyon particles generated in the area. Due to the particles being unstable, unnecessary use of electronic devices is prohibited. Okay, I guess the idea here... For me to get it. Oh, come on, really? I was so close. But, through the use of Tachyon thing. Up. I can rewind time. Forge my own future. Join the resistance. Savor Dr. Bloodcoat. I don't think you'd want to savor him. I don't think that's the one I'm looking for. Humor him. The, the jumping is weird. I, I The bashing feels good, though. So that's a thing. When are we going to meet enemies, though? What's up with that wall? There's some kind of yellow stain on it. Those are nanomachines in liquid form. If you recall them, you can collect objects stained with them. Just RB. Okay, here we go. I got a ball. A ball of nanomachines. 
It's a big ball. And it's only getting bigger. Nano Machine Ball coming soon to a theater near you. Starring Mike Fahey as Nano Machine Ball. With Mike Fahey as the narrator. And Kirk Hamilton as Nano Machine Ball. Wait. That's two people playing Nano Machine Ball. I think Kirk does the stunts. We have. Not a machine ball. So that's our primary weapon, primary F. Yeah, well, weapon. That's what I was saying. A transport device using liquid nanomachine, just like an elevator. It reacts with the wa radio wave of recall. Activate. Okay. Oh my god, shut up. Boom. Neat. Oh. Whoa. Okay, we're almost through this area that we have to giant nano machine ball. Hey Doc, what's up, girl? I think the Doc calls her girl. Maybe there should have been a comma there. What's the point? The first one increases your attack range, the second you shall find out soon. Well, hopefully I can get to that. We have, we're 11 minutes in. To Nano Machine Ball. Let's see if I can get up here. I'll show you the reason she's carrying a giant Nano Machine Ball around on her arm. Now, what's interesting is, she, I guess she's carrying the machine, the, the ball around on her cybernetic arm. But when she moves left and right, her cybernetic arm changes direction. And look at her here. That's not the way people work. Anyway, so there's a matter for them to take care of. And it's early access again. You also lose your nano machine ball when you go through a door. Oh no, wait, there's a classic Raiga. Deadly labor robots slaughtered her friends. Okay. Now I've got more ball from their junk. Robot corpse ball. Now that's satisfying, I like that. Further robot corpse ball? Should I? Okay. The bigger your ball, the further the range and the harder it hits, I guess. Need all the debris, it's very important. Well, that's right. My god, that's a big ball of nano machines. Now there's no more enemies, so I don't have to care about my ball of nano machines since it won't go through that door. As impressive as this ball of nano machines is that sw switches uh, her arm back and forth from side to side of her body, it's not as impressive as it could be. That's a class Padma. Uh, known for eating hearties and hosting Top Chef. There are limits to the... Okay, so you want to hit them with a debris ball larger than the size of their shield part. So for right now, I'm going to try to jump over it. Ow. Ow. Okay. So if it's glowing blue, it's bigger than their eye. Interesting. There. Oh, come on. I don't want to die here. Throwing this ball is really satisfying. All the other weird quirks of the game aside, the ball throwing is on point. And I guess if you're going to make a game about throwing a giant ball, 
Gotta make it on the ball, throwing on point. Die, shield thing. Oh. I'm dead. Anyway, that's the game, ladies and gentlemen. Continues past there, I'm sure, for very long. Uh, it's just launched on Early Access on Steam. This should give you an idea on of whether or not you want to actually look into it in Early Access or wait a bit. Uh, a lot of spelling errors, some weird things going on with the graphics. And uh, Dr. Bloodcoat. If you hit them with a debris ball larger than the size of their shield pot, you can destroy it, leaving them vulnerable, says Dr. Bloodcoat. 